This is the biggest build I have ever done. And I only had a week to do it. But I've done my homework and prepped all I could ahead of time. However, I might have bit off a little more than I can chew. Let's rewind. Oh my gosh, Lucy, have you seen the have you seen the new enclosure? Why is there a coffin in the living room? Who's dying? A coffin? Okay, here's the plan. 270 gallons, part land, part water, with a waterfall. But first, I need the supplies. All right, headed to Lowe's now. Headed to the fish gallery now. All right, here at Pets of Plenty, got my dad's truck, and we're gonna pick up the stand. All right, back at Lowe's. All right, we're at the Bio Dude now. I'm at another reptile convention here to pick up some more supplies. For about a month, I started preparing. I shopped online. I shopped in stores. I tried to get all the supplies I could ahead of time to make the week I took off of work as smooth as possible. <laughs> Look at this. Time to start filling the bathtub again. Everyone loves some big wood. Oh. The idea is to have this filter suck water out of the enclosure, filter it, heat it, and then return it back to the enclosure so it can have tropical fish without having to have a separate water heater. What do you think? I think I think somebody did a real good job. That's what I think. Concealed hinges. Can't wait till it's painted. Time to get this sucker home. Thankfully, I was able to find someone to build the stand with the dimensions that I needed. All right, we have our enclosure here and we have the stand outside in the truck, but now to move these two in order to put the stand where it needs to go. And I still gotta paint it. All right, it is time to paint my massive stand. And pro tip, if you're gonna paint, do it in clothes you don't care about. Let's see if I can actually move this thing. Don't know how heavy this is. Oh. Wow. I have an idea. It might be a crazy one. It might be stupid. It might cost me a lot, but I don't have anyone to help me right now, so. At least it'll be on camera. Okay, I'm gonna be using this new paint called Beyond Paint, and you don't have to prime it or sand it. It goes on a bunch of surfaces. It's like thick and goopy, but normally I might take the time to stain it or something, but I really don't have the time, and I think painted would actually look nice. The only thing you have to do for it is use like some Goo Gone or something to degrease it. Oh, this stuff is goopy. Also, painter's pyramids are fantastic. Okay, I have just left work and I've taken a week off. Now to search for custom glass shop. So believe it or not, this width from the inside glass to inside glass was actually really difficult to measure. So I had to get like a string and then measure that. To silicone around this, you actually want to leave a little bit of a gap. See, I want to put the divider about a third of the way off. So one side will be water, the other side will be land. Even though that's probably further for the water side than I need. However, you can always make more land. You can't always make more water. If I need to put a platform above the water for more land, I can do so. All right, I've got it taped up. 
the gap around the edges is just like a hair bigger than I would have wanted it to be. Like I said, it was kind of difficult to measure. If it doesn't seal properly, we can always use like an epoxy or a resin. Um, hopefully it doesn't come to that though, because I'd much rather the silicone just be the only thing that seals it. Aquarium safe, of course, like 100%, no pesticides or antifungals in it, which surprisingly is hard to find. Okay, so hopefully this glass divider will work, but while that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can paint the sides here, because I don't wanna really see this right here. So I'm just gonna paint this with some acrylic paint. Now I gotta be super careful not to flick it anywhere with my strokes, which it can do, because I don't wanna ruin my newly painted stand. There are two things that make me the most nervous with every build. The first, is water leakage, something not holding somewhere and water is just leaking out. The second is drilling into glass. I am doing both of those things today. I'll be testing water leakage and I will be drilling into glass today. Let's hope everything goes right. While I'm waiting on that to dry, it's time to put together the top part and then I could see where in the glass I need to cut. Now drilling the glass did take longer than anticipated. It takes a while to get through quarter inch thick glass without cracking it. Plus it was ungodly hot yesterday. So after drilling, I kind of just called it a day. But now that the holes are in and the water still hasn't leaked through my glass barrier, it's time to put my idea through its paces. You know, a proof of concept and we're just gonna ignore some of those scratches on the glass I made while trying to drill it. So here's the plan. The divider is about right here. This side is land, this side is water. We have our plants over here, plant here, plant here, plant here, and a hide right here. But the trick is this water feature here. You see, the holes I drilled are about right here, right here, and right here. The pump will be underneath the stand here. It will deliver fresh water up here. The water will go into the waterfall and spill down then, after it circulates, it will be sucked back up with a tube into this hole. And go behind the stand and back to the pump. And because I don't trust water very much, I'm gonna use some hose clamps to fasten the tubes to the pump, just to make it a little extra safe. In the meantime, I am cutting this tub. This tub will be my island. So this will go partially over the water, partially over land. It'll have some plants on it and it's giving back a little bit more land to Lola the boa because of how much of the water space is taking up. So as I'm about to do this background, I'm trying to kind of plan out what kind of temperature and humidity probes and cables and misters and whatever else needs to go through that background because once it's foamed in it might be a little too late at that point so i'm trying to make gaps and spaces and pathways for each one of those i've got 10 possibilities here that i've kind of been planning and i'm trying to think if i missed anything but i think i got it
I have come to love this little thing. It's like having a little lightsaber. It just like cuts the foam. All right, so right now before I continue doing the background above the water part, I need to make a box um, so that all the incoming water and fog can go into this box and then there'll just be a slit where it will flow out of. So that's my challenge now. I've got this corrugated plastic right here and of course I've got a bunch of foam board, but we'll see what I come up with. I'm halfway through the week now, and this project has been fun, it's been exciting, it's been stressful, it's been a lot. The scope of it, the cost of it, everything has kind of ballooned a little bit. It doesn't feel like I've done a lot so far, it feels like I have so much more to do. However, I know I've done a lot of the structural things, and those are the most difficult things, so... I'm hoping I get a lot of progress done today and tomorrow because I really just want to get this project done by the end of this week. My living room is currently a mess and I also have two roommates. I'm so sorry for them. <laughs> so this egg crate riser right here is supposed to be kind of the structural base for my waterfall. It's gonna kind of hold up my little box, which the water will spill into then spill out of. Um, however, I'm not in love with my little box, so I think I'm going to go with a pre-made box, aka like a Tupperware, and just kind of cut an inlet slit and a spill out slit. So now I have the structure for my waterfall. I just need to build the rocks up around it. I have egg crate light diffusion on the bottom that's going to distribute the weight of the rock so it's not just pressing on that glass. I also have my island right here that I'm building that the fish can swim under and that Lola can get on top and I can plant plants over. And then I'm gonna drill some holes here so any drainage from the plants and the soil drips on the land side and not into the water. All right, I need to hold up this log somehow. So I'm thinking of filling out the space behind it with some extra foam board and then using the spray foam to kind of fill in the gaps. In the meantime, I have it being held up by this fishing line and this other big piece of board right here. It is the next day and it is time to see if the wood I put up has held in place. Let's hope so. And it looks like it held. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. All right, we have an update for this section here, this little island, in hindsight, I should have just taken the tub out, flipped it upside down and got the underneath side of it. However, I didn't think of that till a few minutes after I already foamed it in place. So basically I got some pieces of egg crate and put it underneath and that will give something for the foam to adhere to a little bit easier than the plastic. And it should make foaming the underside of it a little bit easier. Also, I drilled in to the waterfall section on a second spot, so water's trickling out at two places, and I think that would just look a little bit better. So, it's Friday, and I've done most of the foaming. I actually ran out of a little bit of foam, and had to go get some more foam. I'm a little behind the schedule I was planning on, because the week is almost over.
And today is the carving. So I've got these drill bits here, which are not drill bits at all actually, they're just wire bits that I can attach to the DeWalt here and it will do most of the work for me. I'm sure it's going to be a godsend. So it's Saturday and although at least from day to day it doesn't seem like so much has been done, I've been working like 9 or 10 hours a day on this and I think we're actually pretty close here. But I'm going to start off today with some final carving and detail work. I keep running out of days. I keep getting more and more rushed. However, I do think I'm catching up which is a good thing. All right, I've got the background carved now. I'm gonna go over it with a heat gun to help like get rid of any stray pieces, make sure it's one solid, you know, piece without foam flying everywhere. Okay, so the heat gun was interesting. It definitely made it less foamy and it's a lot more rocky now and hard. Time to get some dry lock on here. And I'm hoping that this waterfall over here will actually look like stone and match the rest of this, but I'll have to see. I have a couple other tricks up my sleeve if it goes awry. Now while this first coat is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can put egg crate together to form a barrier between the drainage layer and the substrate that will sit on top of it. Also while that background layer is drying, I'm gonna soak these Lika balls for the drainage layer. And soaking them ahead of time helps with humidity. They're clay balls and they're gonna absorb water. And so I want them pre-soaked so they're not taking humidity out of the enclosure once I put it in. Okay, now that the background is mostly dry, I put a big box pan up here to help it dry. I'm gonna go over and dry brush some lighter colors, some browns on this side and some whites on this side to kind of blend in with the stone. And I think that's gonna make it look a lot better. All right, I think we're getting somewhere now. It's starting to look much better. However, it's late. I'm gonna start again tomorrow. Good morning. It is Sunday. It has been a full week now, and I've run out of off days. So this might have to be two videos, but I did get a good chunk of it done, and I still have all of today. So I'm gonna start off by kind of spraying down the background, getting rid of all the loose debris, uh, kind of washing off that dry lock now that it's dried. That helps with the plants growing up the background. If you can give it a good rinse, plus it'll help me double check the seals for any leaks again. But while that's soaking, I'm gonna grab some coffee and breakfast. So it doesn't really look like I have enough of these Lika balls. However, I do have some extra drainage layer from my last vivarium. They're just like rocks basically, but it'll work. I'm sure the Lika is actually more functional in terms of humidity. However, this will do and it'll be enough for now. When it comes to snakes, I don't like to just put a cloth, like a window screen or something. I think it needs to have some sort of physical barrier that's more robust, like a egg crate. And then I put the cloth over that. I got a handful of these from 
the reptile show I went to. It's from Josh's Frogs. It's just a substrate barrier. I'm gonna go ahead and put that over my leak of balls, and then secure it to the edges with some foam so nothing can get underneath, particularly the snake. I don't want her burrowing underneath that substrate layer. But now it's time to take what's left of my foam and fill in all my gaps, cracks, and seams. Okay, now that I've done my touch-ups, I want to go ahead and do the old-fashioned method of backgrounds, which is silicone and then some cocoa fiber, and then on the water part, silicone and just some like sand, rock, stuff like that. But I'm not gonna cover up, you know, the beautiful background that's already there, but it's gonna help with like some of the seams and some of the bottom parts and some of the planted areas. Uh, it's just gonna be an addition to or as a complement of. So it's been a few days. I definitely did not finish in the week that I had planned to finish in that time span that I was off. However, it is now a few days later and I find myself just tweaking at it after work ever so slightly, bit by bit. And I think I'm getting it to a good place. I really like how this is turning out. I think it's turning out fantastic. However, this project went way out of scope in terms of the cost of it and in terms of time it's taking. But now on to like my favorite part. 